Hello and welcome to the Strange Tales podcast presented by me, your host, Winston R. Douglas. We are a weekly podcast that looks at weird and wonderful tales from history, true crime, conspiracies and much more. I will try to cover various topics from different eras hopefully we can take a journey through history together. If you are a first time listener please look back on our previous episodes, if you are a returning listener thank you for your continual support. If you enjoy the podcast please smash that gorgeous like button and subscribe so that you will be notified to future shows. Also if you could write a 5 star review that would really help us get the word out, so other people can enjoy the podcast as well. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube at Strange Tales Pod. Or you can message me at strangetalespod at gmail.com, with feedback or ideas on future shows. If you would like to support the podcast you can do so through Patreon, go to patreon.com forward slash strange tales pod. Where we have plans from as little as three US dollars a month and you can opt out any time. Any help is much appreciated. This week we take a look at the works of Banksy the England based street artist, political activist, and film director whose real name and identity remain unconfirmed and the subject of speculation. Active since the 1990s, His satirical street art and subversive epigrams combine dark humor with graffiti executed in a distinctive stenciling technique. His works of political and social commentary have appeared on streets, walls, and bridges throughout the world. Banksy's work grew out of the Bristol underground scene, which involved collaborations between artists and musicians. Banksy displays his art on publicly visible surfaces such as walls and self-built physical prop pieces. Banksy no longer sells photographs or reproductions of his street graffiti, but his public installations are regularly resold, often even by removing the wall they were painted on. Okay, let's get into today's strange tale. Banksy's name and identity remain unconfirmed and the subject of speculation. In a 2003 interview with Simon Hattonstone of The Guardian, Banksy is described as white, 28, scruffy casual, jeans, t-shirt, a silver tooth, silver chain and silver earring. He looks like a cross between Jimmy Nail and Mike Skinner of the streets. Banksy began as an artist at the age of 14, was expelled from school, and served time in prison for petty crime. According to Hattonstone, Anonymity is vital to him, because graffiti is illegal. Banksy reportedly lived in Easton, Bristol during the late 1990s, before moving to London around 2000. Banksy is commonly believed to be Robin Gunningham, as first identified by the Mail on Sunday in 2008. Born on the 28th of July 1973 in Yate, 19 kilometres from Bristol. Several of Gunningham's associates and former schoolmates at Bristol Cathedral School have corroborated this, and in 2016. A study by researchers at the Queen Mary University of London using geographic profiling found that the incidence of Banksy's works correlated with the known movements of Gunningham. According to the Sunday Times, Gunningham began employing the name Robin Banks, which eventually became Banksy. Two cassette sleeves featuring his artwork from 1993, for the Bristol band Mother Samosa, exist with his signature. In June 2017, DJ Goldie referred to Banksy as Rob. There has been alternative speculation that Banksy is. Robert Del Major, aka 3D, member of the trip-hop band Massive Attack. Del Major had been a graffiti artist, during the 1980s prior to forming the band and had previously been identified as a personal friend of Banksy. Jamie Hewlett, English comic book artist and designer best known for the comic Tank Girl, and the virtual band Gorillaz. Joanna Brooks, Banksy's publicist, denied this claim. In 2020, users on Twitter began to speculate that former Art Attack presenter Neil Buchanan was Banksy. This was denied by Buchanan's publicist. 
Banksy started as a freehand graffiti artist in 1990-1994 as one of Bristol's Dry Bread Z crew, DBZ, with two other artists known as Cato and Tess. He was inspired by local artists and his work was part of the larger Bristol underground scene with Nick Walker, Inky and 3D. During this time he met Bristol photographer Steve Lazarides, who began selling Banksy's work, later becoming his agent. By 2000 he had turned to the art of stenciling after realizing how much less time it took to complete a work. He claims he changed to stenciling while hiding from the police under a rubbish lorry, when he noticed the stenciled serial number and by employing this technique, he soon became more widely noticed for his art around Bristol and London. Banksy's first known large wall mural was the Mild Mild West painted in 1997 to cover advertising of a former solicitor's office on Stokes Croft in Bristol. It depicts a teddy bear lobbing a Molotov cocktail at three riot police. Banksy's stencils feature striking and humorous images occasionally combined with slogans. The message is usually anti-war, anti-capitalist, or anti-establishment. Subjects often include rats, apes, policemen, soldiers, children, and the elderly. In July 2011 one of Banksy's early works, Gorilla in a Pink Mask, which had been a prominent landmark on the exterior wall of a former social club in Eastville for over 10 years, was unwittingly painted over after the premises became a Muslim cultural center. Exhibitions, 2002-2003 on the 19th of July 2002, Banksy's first Los Angeles exhibition debuted at 331 Thirds Gallery, a tiny Silver Lake venue owned by Frank Sosa and was on view until 18 August. The exhibition, entitled Existentialism, an exhibition of art, lies and deviousness was curated by 331 Thirds Gallery. The fire of the exhibition indicates an opening reception was followed by a performance by Money Mark with DJs June Alabama Jackson, Retmatic, J Rock, Coleman. Some of the paintings exhibited included Smiley Copper H, 2002, Leopard and Barcode, 2002, Bomb Hugger, 2002, and Love is in the Air, 2002. In 2003, at an exhibition called Turf War, held in a London warehouse, Banksy painted on animals. At the time he gave one of his very few interviews, to the BBC's Nigel Wrench. Although the RSBCA declared the conditions suitable, an animal rights activist chained herself to the railings in protest. An example of his subverted paintings is Monet's Water Lily Pond, adapted to include urban detritus such as litter and a shopping trolley floating in its reflective waters. Another is Edward Hopper's Nighthawks, redrawn to show that the characters are looking at a British football hooligan, dressed only in his Union flag underpants, who has just thrown an object through the glass window of the cafe. These oil paintings were shown at a 12-day exhibition in Westbourne Grove, London in 2005. Banksy, along with Shepard Fairey, Boat, and others, created work at a warehouse exhibition in Alexandria, Sydney, for semi-permanent in 2003. Approximately 1,500 people attended. In August 2004, Banksy produced a quantity of spoof British £10 notes replacing the picture of the Queen's head with Diana, Princess of Wales's head and changing the text Bank of England to Banksy of England. Someone threw a large wad of these into a crowd at Notting Hill Carnival that year, which some recipients then tried to spend in local shops. These notes were also given with invitations to a Santa's Ghetto exhibition by pictures on walls. The individual notes have since been selling on eBay. A wad of the notes was also thrown over a fence and into the crowd near the enemy signing tent at the Reading Festival. A limited run of 50 signed posters containing 10 uncut notes was also produced and sold by pictures on walls for £100 each to commemorate the death of Princess Diana. One of these sold in October 2007 at Bonham's Auction House in London for £24,000. Banksy held an exhibition called Barely Legal, billed as a three-day vandalized warehouse extravaganza in Los Angeles, 
on the weekend of the 16th of September 2006. The exhibition featured a live elephant in a room, painted in a pink and gold floral wallpaper pattern, which, according to leaflets handed out at the exhibition, was intended to draw attention to the issue of world poverty. Although the Animal Services Department had issued a permit for the elephant, after complaints from animal rights activists, the elephant appeared unpainted on the final day. Its owners rejected claims of mistreatment and said that the elephant had done many, many movies. She's used to makeup. Banksy also made artwork displaying Queen Victoria as a lesbian and satirical pieces that incorporated art made by Andy Warhol and Leonardo da Vinci. After Christina Aguilera bought an original of Queen Victoria as a lesbian and two prints for £25,000, on the 19th of October 2006, a set of Kate Moss paintings sold in Sotheby's London for £50,400, setting an auction record for Banksy's work. The six silk screen prints, featuring the model painted in the style of Andy Warhol's Marilyn Monroe pictures, sold for five times their estimated price. Their stencil of a green Mona Lisa with real paint dripping from her eyes sold for £57,600 of the same auction. In December, journalist Max Foster coined the phrase, the Banksy effect, to illustrate how interest in other street artists was growing on the back of Banksy's success. On the 21st of February 2007, Sotheby's Auction House in London auctioned three works, reaching the highest ever price for a Banksy work at auction, over £102,000 for bombing Middle England. Two of his other graffiti works, Girl with Balloon and Bomb Hugger, sold for £37,200 and £31,200 respectively, which were well above their estimated prices. The following day's auction saw a further three Banksy works reach soaring prices, Ballerina with Action Man Parts reached £96,000. Glory sold for £72,000, Untitled, 2004, sold for £33,600, all significantly above price estimates. To coincide with the second day of auctions, Banksy updated his website with a new image of an auction house seen showing people bidding on a picture that said, I can't believe you morons actually buy this shit. In February 2007, the owners of a house with a Banksy mural on the side in Bristol decided to sell the house through Red Propeller Art Gallery after offers fell through because the prospective buyers wanted to remove the mural. It is listed as a mural that comes with a house attached. In April 2007, Transport for London painted over Banksy's image of a scene from Quentin Tarantino's film Pulp Fiction, featuring Samuel L. Jackson and John Travolta clutching bananas instead of guns. Although the image was very popular, Transport for London claimed that the graffiti created a general atmosphere of neglect and social decay which in turn encourages crime and their staff are professional cleaners not professional art critics. Banksy painted the same site again and, initially, the actors were portrayed as holding real guns instead of bananas, but they were adorned with banana costumes. Sometime later, Banksy made a tribute artwork over this second pulp fiction work. The tribute was for 19-year-old British graffiti artist Ozone who, along with fellow artist Wants, was hit by an underground train in Barking, East London on the 12th of January 2007. Banksy depicted an angel wearing a bulletproof vest holding a skull. He also wrote a note on his website saying, The last time I hit this spot I painted a crap picture of two men in banana costumes waving handguns. A few weeks later a writer called Ozone completely dogged it and then wrote if it's better next time I'll leave it in the bottom corner. When we lost Ozone we lost a fearless graffiti writer and as it turns out a pretty perceptive art critic. Ozone, rest in peace. On the 27th of April 2007, a new record high for the sale of Banksy's work was set with the auction of the workspace Girl and Bird fetching £288,000, US dollars around 20 times the estimate at Bonhams of London. On the 21st of May 2007 Banksy gained the award for Art's Greatest Living Britain. Banksy, as expected, 
did not turn up to collect his award and continued with his anonymous status. On the 4th of June 2007, it was reported that Banksy's The Drinker had been stolen. In October 2007, most of his works offered for sale at Bonham's auction house in London sold for more than twice their reserve price. Banksy has published a manifesto on his website. The text of the manifesto is credited as the diary entry of British Lieutenant Colonel Mervyn Willett Gonin, DSO, which is exhibited in the Imperial War Museum. It describes how a shipment of lipstick to the Bourbon Belson concentration camp immediately after its liberation at the end of World War II helped the internees regain their humanity. However, as of the 18th of January 2008, Banksy's manifesto has been replaced with Graffiti Heroes No. 03, which describes Peter Chappell's graffiti quest of the 1970s that worked to free George Davis from imprisonment. By the 12th of August, 2009 he was relying on Emo Phillips when I was a kid I used to pray every night for a new bicycle. Then I realized God doesn't work that way, so I stole one and prayed for forgiveness. A small number of Banksy's works can be seen in the movie Children of Men, including a stenciled image of two policemen kissing, and another stencil of a child looking down a shop. In March 2008, Nathan Wellard and Maeve Neal, a couple from Norfolk, UK, made headlines in Britain when they decided to sell their mobile home that contains a 30-foot mural, entitled Fragile Silence, done by Banksy a decade prior to his rise to fame. According to Nathan Wellard, Banksy had asked the couple if he could use the side of their home as a large canvas, to which they agreed. In return for the canvas, the Bristol stencil artist gave them two free tickets to the Glastonbury Festival. The mobile home purchased by the couple 11 years earlier for £1,000, was priced at £500,000. Also in March 2008, a stenciled graffiti work appeared on Thames Water Tower in the middle of the Holland Park roundabout, and it was widely attributed to Banksy. It was of a child painting the tag Take This, Society. In bright orange. London Borough of Hammersmith and Fulham spokesman, Councillor Greg Smith branded the art as vandalism, and ordered its immediate removal, which was carried out by Hanf Council workmen within three days. In late August 2008, marking the third anniversary of Hurricane Katrina and the associated levee failure disaster, Banksy produced a series of works in New Orleans, Louisiana, mostly on buildings derelict since the disaster. A stencil painting attributed to Banksy appeared at a vacant petrol station in the Ensley neighborhood of Birmingham, Alabama on the 29th of August as Hurricane Gustav approached the New Orleans area. The painting depicting a hooded member of the Ku Klux Klan hanging from a noose, was quickly covered with black spray paint and later removed altogether. His first official exhibition in New York City, The Village Pet Store, and Charcoal Grill, opened the 5th of October 2008. The animatronic pets in the store window include a mother hen watching over her baby chicken McNuggets as they peck at a barbecue sauce packet, and a rabbit putting makeup on in a mirror. The Westminster City Council stated in October 2008 that the work One Nation under CCTV, painted in April 2008 would be painted over as it was graffiti. The council said it would remove any graffiti, regardless of the reputation of its creator, and specifically stated that Banksy has no more right to paint graffiti than a child. Robert Davis, the chairman of the council planning committee told the Times newspaper. If we condone this then we might as well say that any kid with a spray can is producing art. The work was painted over in April 2009. In December 2008, The Little Diver, a Banksy image of a diver in a duffel coat in Melbourne, Australia, was destroyed. The image had been protected by a sheet of clear perspex, however, Silver paint was poured behind the protective sheet and later tagged with the words Banksy was air. The image was almost completely obliterated. In London, over the weekend 3 the 5th of May 2008, Banksy hosted an exhibition called the Cannes Festival. It was situated on Leak Street, 
a road tunnel formerly used by Eurostar underneath London Waterloo Station. Graffiti artists with stencils were invited to join in and paint their own artwork, as long as it did not cover anyone else. S. Banksy invited artists from around the world to exhibit their works. In May 2009, Banksy parted company with agent Steve Lazarides and announced that Pest Control, the handling service who act on his behalf, would be the only point of sale for new works. On the 13th of June 2009, the Banksy vs. Bristol Museum show opened at Bristol City Museum and Art Gallery, featuring more than 100 works of art, including animatronics and installations. It is his largest exhibition yet, featuring 78 new works. Reaction to the show was positive, with over 8,500 visitors to the show on the first weekend. Over the course of the 12 weeks, the exhibition was visited over 300,000 times. In September 2009, a Banksy work parodying the royal family was partially destroyed by Hackney Council after they served an enforcement notice for graffiti removal to the former address of the property owner. The mural had been commissioned for the 2003 Blur single Crazy Beat, and the property owner, who had allowed it to be painted, was reported to have been in tears when she saw it was being painted over. In December 2009, Banksy marked the end of the 2009 United Nations Climate Change Conference by painting four murals on global warming. One included the phrase, I don't believe in global warming, the words were submerged in water. A feud and graffiti war between Banksy and King Robbo broke out when Banksy allegedly painted over one of Robbo's tags. The feud has led to many of Banksy's works being altered by graffiti writers. The world premiere of the film Exit Through the Gift Shop occurred at the Sundance Film Festival in Park City, Utah, on the 24th of January. He created 10 street artworks around Park City and Salt Lake City to tie in with the screening. In February, the White House Public House in Liverpool, England, was sold for £114,000 at auction. The side of the building has an image of a giant rat by Banksy. In March 2010, a modified version of the work Forgive Us Are Trespassing a Kneeling Boy with a spray-painted halo was displayed at London Bridge Station on a poster. This version of the work did not possess the halo due to its stylistic nature and the prevalence of graffiti in the underground. After a few days the halo was repainted by a graffitist, so Transport for London disposed of the poster. Banksy paints over the line between aesthetics and language, then stealthily repaints it in the unlikeliest of places. His works, whether he stencils them on the streets, sells them in exhibitions or hangs them in museums on the sly, are filled with wit and metaphors that transcend language barriers. In April, to coincide with the premiere of Exit Through the Gift Shop in San Francisco, five of his works appeared in various parts of the city. Banksy reportedly paid a San Francisco Chinatown building owner $50 for the use of their wall for one of his stencils. In May 2010, seven new Banksy works of art appeared in Toronto, Canada, though most have been subsequently painted over or removed. In May, to coincide with the premiere of Exit Through the Gift Shop in Royal Oak, Banksy visited the Detroit area and left his mark in several places in Detroit and Warren. Shortly after, his work depicting a little boy holding a can of red paint next to the words I remember when all this was trees was excavated by the 555 non-profit gallery and studios. They claim that they do not intend to sell the work but plan to preserve it and display it at their Detroit gallery. There was also an attempted removal of one of the Warren works known as Diamond Girl. While in the United States, Banksy also completed a painting in Chinatown, Boston, known as Follow Your Dreams. January 2011, Exit Through the Gift Shop was nominated for a 2010 Oscar for Best Documentary Feature. Banksy released a statement about the nomination, stating, This is a big surprise I don't agree with the concept of award ceremonies, but I'm prepared to make an exception for the ones I'm nominated for. The last time there was a naked man covered in gold paint in my house, it was me. Leading up to the Oscars, 
Banksy blanketed Los Angeles with street art. Many people speculated if Banksy would show up at the Oscars in disguise and make a surprise appearance if he won the Oscar. Exit through the gift shop did not win the award, which went to Inside Job. In early March 2011, Banksy responded to the Oscars with an artwork in Western Supermare, of a little girl holding the Oscar and pouting. Many people think that it is about 15-month-old Lara, who dropped and damaged her father's Oscar statue. Exit through the gift shop was broadcast on British public television station the 13th of August 2011. Banksy was credited with the opening couch gag for the 2010 The Simpsons episode Money Bart, depicting people working in deplorable conditions and using endangered or mythical animals to make both the episodes, Cell by Cell and the merchandise connected with the program. His name appears several times throughout the episode's opening sequence, spray-painted on assorted walls and signs. Fox sanitized parts of the opening for taste and to make it less grim. In January 2011, Banksy published the original storyboard on its website. According to Banksy, the storyboard led to delays, disputes over broadcast standards and a threatened walkout by the animation department. Executive Director Al Jean jokingly said, this is what you get when you outsource. In May 2011 Banksy released a lithographic print which showed a smoking petrol bomb contained in a Tesco value bottle. This followed a long-running campaign by locals against the opening of a Tesco Express supermarket in Banksy's home city of Bristol. Violent clashes had taken place between police and demonstrators in the Stokes Croft area. Banksy produced the poster ostensibly to raise money for local groups in the Stokes Croft area, and to raise money for the legal defense of those arrested during the riots. The posters were sold exclusively at the Bristol Anarchists Book Fair in Stokescroft for £5 each. In December, he unveiled Cardinal Sin at the Walker Art Gallery, Liverpool. The bust, which replaces a priest's face with a pixelated effect, was a statement on the child abuse scandal in the Catholic Church. On the 18th of February, BBC News reported that a recent Banksy mural, known as the slave labor mural portraying a young child sewing union flag bunting, created around the time of the Diamond Jubilee of Elizabeth II, had been removed from the side of a Poundland store in Wood Green, North London, and soon appeared for sale in Fine Art Auctions Miami's catalog, a U.S. auction site based in Florida. News of this had reportedly caused lots of anger in the local community, and is considered by some to be a theft. Fine Art Auctions Miami had rejected claims of theft, saying it had signed a contract with a well-known collector and that everything was above board. Despite this, the local councillor for Wood Green campaigned for the work's return. On the scheduled day of the auction, Fine Art Auctions Miami announced that it had withdrawn the work of art from the sale. On the 11th of May, BBC News reported that the same Banksy mural, was up for auction again in Covent Garden by the Sincura Group. The auction was scheduled to take place in June, and was expected to fetch up to £450,000. On the 24th of September, after over a year since his previous piece, a new mural went up on his website along with the subtitle Better Out Than In. On the 1st of October 2013, Banksy began a one-month show on the streets of New York City, for which he opened a separate website and granted an interview to the Village Voice via his publicist. A pop-up boutique of about 25 spray art canvases appeared on Fifth Avenue near Central Park on the 12th of October. Tourists were able to buy Banksy art for just $60 each. In a note posted to his website, the artist wrote, please note this was a one-off. The stall will not be there again. The BBC estimated that the street stall art pieces could be worth as much as $31,000. The booth was manned by an unknown elderly man who went about four hours before making a sale, yawning and eating lunch as people strolled by without a second glance at the work. Banksy chronicled the surprise sale in a video posted to his website noting, 
Yesterday I set up a stall in the park selling 100% authentic original signed Banksy canvases. For $60 each. Two of the canvases sold at a July 2014 auction for $214,000. It was reported that then New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg called Banksy a vandal whose work is not the definition of art, and that the NYPD's vandal squad was on the hunt for Banksy over his various graffiti art and installations. One creation was a fiberglass sculpture of Ronald McDonald and a real person, barefoot and in ragged clothes, shining the oversized shoes of Ronald McDonald. The sculpture was unveiled in Queens but moved outside a different McDonald's around the city every day. Other works included a YouTube video, showing what appears to be footage of jihadist militants shooting down an animated Dumbo. Traveling installations that toured the city including a slaughterhouse delivery truck full of stuffed animals and a waterfall, and a modified painting donated to a charity shop which was later sold in an online auction for $615,000. Banksy also posted a mock-up of a New York Times op-ed attacking the design of the One World Trade Center after the Times rejected his submission. The residency in New York concluded on the 31st of October 2013, Many of the pieces, though, were either vandalized, removed or stolen. In February 2015 Banksy published a two-minute video titled Make This the Year You Discover a New Destination about his trip to Gaza Strip. During the visit he painted a few artworks including a kitten on the remains of a house destroyed by an Israeli airstrike. I wanted to highlight the destruction in Gaza by posting photos on my website, but on the internet people only look at pictures of kittens, and a swing hanging off a watchtower. In a statement to the New York Times his publicist said, I don't want to take sides. But when you see entire suburban neighborhoods reduced to rubble with no hope of a future, what you're really looking at is a vast outdoor recruitment center for terrorists. And we should probably address this for all our sakes. Banksy opened Dismaland, a large-scale group show modeled on Disneyland on the 21st of August, 2015. It lampooned the many disappointing temporary themed attractions in the UK at the time. Dismaland permanently closed on the 27th of September, 2015. The theme park was located in Western Supermare, United Kingdom. According to the Dismaland website, Artists represented on the show include Damien Hirst and Jenny Holzer. In December 2015, Vanksy created several murals in the vicinity of Calais, France, including the so-called jungle where migrants live as they attempt to enter the United Kingdom. One of the pieces, the son of a migrant from Syria, depicts Steve Jobs as a migrant. In 2017, Marking the 100th anniversary of the British control of Palestine, Banksy financed the creation of the Waldorf Hotel in Bethlehem. This hotel is open to the public and contains rooms designed by Banksy, Sami Musa, and Dominique Patron, and each of the bedrooms face the wall. It also houses a contemporary art gallery. 2018 saw Banksy return to New York five years after his better out than in residency. A trademark rat running around the circumference of a clock face, dubbed Rat Race, was torn down by developers within a week of it appearing on a former bank building at 101 West 14th Street, but other works, including a mural of imprisoned Kurdish artist Sarah Dogan on the famed Bowery Wall and a series of others across Brooklyn, remain on display. Balloon Girl Shredding In October 2018, one of Banksy's works, Balloon Girl, was sold in an auction at Sotheby's in London for £1.04 million. However, shortly after the gavel dropped and it was sold, an alarm sounded inside of the picture frame and the canvas passed through a shredder hidden within the frame, partially shredding the picture. Banksy then posted an image of the shredding on Instagram captioned going, going, gone. After the sale, the auction house acknowledged that the self-destruction of the work was a prank by the artist. The prank received wide news coverage around the world, with one newspaper stating that it was quite possibly the biggest prank in art history. Joey Sire, co-founder of an online platform facilitating art dealer sales, 
told the Evening Standard. The auction result will only propel this further and given the media attention this stunt has received, the lucky buyer would see a great return on the £1.02 million they paid last night. This is now part of art history in its shredded state and we'd estimate Banksy has added at a minimum 50% to its value, possibly as high as being worth £2M+. A man seen filming the shredding of the picture during its auction has been suggested to be Banksy. Banksy has since released a video on how the shredder was installed into the frame and the shredding of the picture, explaining that he had surreptitiously fitted the painting with the shredder a few years previously, in case it ever went up for auction. To explain his rationale for destroying his own artwork, Banksy quoted Picasso, the urge to destroy is also a creative urge. It is not known how the shredder was activated. Banksy has released another video indicating that the painting was intended to be shredded completely. The video shows a sample painting completely shredded by the frame and says, in rehearsals it worked every time. The woman who won the bidding at the auction decided to go through with the purchase. The partially shredded work has been given a new title, Love is in the Bin, and it was authenticated by Banksy's authentication body pest control. Sotheby released a statement that said Banksy didn't destroy an artwork in the auction, he created one, and called it the first artwork in history to have been created live due. A two-sided graffiti piece, one side depicting a child tasting the falling snow, the other revealing that the snow is in fact smoke and embers from a dumpster fire, appeared on two walls of a steelworker's garage in Port Talbot in December. Banksy then revealed that the painting was in fact his via an Instagram video sound tracked by the festive children's song Little Snowflake. Many fans of the artist went to see the painting and Plaid Cymru councillor for Ababan, Nigel Thomas Hunt, stated that the town was buzzing with speculation that the work was Banksy's. The owner of the garage, Ian Lewis, said that he had lost sleep over fears that the image would be vandalized. A plastic screen, partially funded by Michael Sheen, was installed to protect the mural, but was attacked by a drunk halfwit. Extra security guards were subsequently drafted to protect the graffiti piece. In May 2019, the mural was moved to a gallery in the town's Tia Orsuf building. In early October 2019, Banksy opened a pop-up shop named Gross Domestic Product in Croydon, South London in order to strengthen his position in a trademark dispute with a greetings cards company who had challenged his trademark on the grounds that he was not using it. In a statement, Banksy said a greetings cards company is contesting the trademark I hold to my art, and attempting to take custody of my name so they can sell their fake Banksy merchandise legally. Mark Stevens, arts lawyer and founder of the Design and, and Artists Copyright Society, called the case a ludicrous litigation and is providing the artist legal advice. Stevens recommended opening the shop to Banksy on the grounds that it would show he is making use of his trademark, saying, because Banksy doesn't produce his own range of shoddy merchandise and the law is quite clear, if the trademark holder is not using the mark, then it can be transferred to someone who will. On the 4th of October 2019, Greetings Cards distributor Full Color Black publicly revealed itself as the company involved in the trademark dispute whilst rejecting Banksy's claims as entirely untrue. The company claimed it had contacted Banksy's lawyers several times to offer to pay royalties. On the 14th of September 2020, the European Union Intellectual Property Office ruled in favor of Full Color Black in the trademark dispute over Banksy's infamous flower thrower. The European panel judges in decided that Banksy's trademark was invalid as it had been filed in bad faith according to Regulation 2017 1001R.59. The judges were not convinced that the opening of the artist's pop-up shop demonstrated a real intention to legitimize the trademark, condemning it as inconsistent with the honest practices of the trade. The artist's choice to be represented anonymously was not received well by the court either, noting that even if they found in favor of Banksy, legal rights could not be attributed to an unidentifiable person. However, 
Counsel for the defense strongly argued that to reveal his identity would diminish the persona of the artist. Although not binding, the judges also referenced Banksy's previously critical statements about copyright, which contributed to the lack of sympathy for the artist's case. In October 2019, Devolved Parliament, a 2009 painting by Banksy showing members of Parliament depicted as chimpanzees in the House of Commons, sold at Sotheby's in London for just under £9.9 .9 million. On Instagram, the artist said it was a record price for a Banksy painting and shame I didn't still own it. At four meters wide it is Banksy's biggest known work on canvas. The auction house stated, regardless of where you sit in the Brexit debate, there's no doubt that this work is more pertinent now than it has ever been. On the 13th of February 2020, the Valentine's Banksy mural appeared on the side of a building in Bristol's Barton Hill neighborhood, depicting a young girl firing a slingshot of real red flowers and leaves. In the early hours of Valentine's Day, Banksy confirmed this was his work on his Instagram account and website. The painting was defaced just days after appearing. Banksy dedicated a painting titled Painting for Saints or Game Changer to NHS staff, and donated it to the University Hospital of Southampton during the global coronavirus pandemic in May 2020. The painting was sold for £14.4 million, £16.8 million including by a premium, on 23 March 2021, which is a record for an artwork by Banksy. The proceeds from the sale would benefit a number of NHS-related organizations and charity. In March 2021, the image of an escaping prisoner appeared overnight on the side of Reading Prison. Two days later Banksy claimed the artwork. The former jail's next use had been disputed locally, some wanting it to be used as an arts hub, while developers proposed it could be sold to a housing developer. The escaping prisoner was said to resemble Oscar Wilde, who had been imprisoned in Reading Prison, with the rope as tied together bedsheets with a typewriter attached to the end. Banksy has claimed responsibility for a number of high-profile artworks, including the following. At London Zoo, he climbed into the penguin enclosure and painted We're Bored of Fish. At London Zoo, he left the message I want out. This place is too cold. Keeper smells. Boring, boring, boring. In the elephant enclosure. In 2004, he placed the Peace Banksus Militus Ratus into London's Natural History Museum. In March 2005, he placed subverted artworks in the Museum of Modern Art, Metropolitan Museum of Art, and American Museum of Natural History in Manhattan as well as the Brooklyn Museum in Brooklyn. In May 2005 Banksy's version of a primitive cave painting depicting a human figure hunting wildlife while pushing a shopping trolley was hung in Gallery 49 of the British Museum, London. In August 2005, he painted nine images on the Israeli West Bank barrier, including an image of a ladder going up and over the wall and an image of children digging a hole through the wall. In October 2005, he designed six station IDs for Nickelodeon. In April 2006, Banksy created a sculpture based on a crumpled red phone box with a pickaxe in its side, apparently bleeding, and placed it in a side street in Soho, London. It was later removed by Westminster Council. In June 2006, Banksy created Well Hung Lover, an image of a naked man hanging out of a bedroom window on a wall visible from Park Street in central Bristol. The image sparked a heated debate, with the Bristol City Council leaving it up to the public to decide whether it should stay or go. After an internet discussion in which 97% of the 500 people surveyed supported the stencil, the City Council decided it would be left on the building. The mural was later defaced with blue paint. 2006, Banksy placed up to 500 copies of Paris Hilton's debut CD, Paris, in 48 different UK record stores with his own cover art and remixes by Danger Mouse. Music tracks were given titles such as Why Am I Famous, What Have I Done and What Am I For. Several copies of the CD were purchased by the public before stores were able to remove them, 
some going on to be sold for as much as £750 on online auction websites, such as eBay. The cover art depicted Hilton digitally altered to appear topless. Other pictures feature her with her Chihuahua Tinkerbell's head replacing her own, and one of her stepping out of a luxury car, edited to include a group of homeless people, which included the caption 90% of success is just showing up. September 2006, Banksy dressed an inflatable doll in the manner of a Guantanamo Bay detainment camp prisoner and then placed the figure within the Big Thunder Mountain Railroad ride at the Disneyland theme park in Anaheim, California. He makes stickers, the neighborhood watch subvert, and was responsible for the cover art of Blur's 2003 album Think Tank. 2007, Banksy covered a wall in Portobello Road with a French artist painting graffiti of Banksy's name. 2012, in the run-up to the London Olympic Games he created several pieces based upon this event. One included an image of an athlete throwing a missile instead of a javelin, evidently taking a poke at the surface-to-air missile sites positioned in the Stratford area to defend the Games. 2014, he created a piece in Cheltenham, near the government communications headquarters headquarters, which depicts three men wearing sunglasses and using listening devices to snoop on a telephone box, evidently criticizing the recent global surveillance disclosures of 2013. This piece disappeared the 20th of August, 2016 during renovations to the building it was on, and may have been destroyed. 2016, a 14 feet painting of a child with a stick chasing a burning tire was found in the Bridge Farm Primary School in Bristol with a letter from Banksy thanking the school for naming one of its houses after him. Banksy wrote that if the members of the school did not like the painting, they should add their own elements. 2017, Banksy claimed the authorship of a giant Brexit mural painted on a house in De Thank you all so much for listening. I really hope that you enjoyed today's strange tale. If you did please smash that gorgeous like button, and subscribe so that you will be notified to future shows. Also if you could write a 5 star review that would really help us get the word out, so other people can enjoy the podcast as well. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube at Strange Tales Pod. Or you can message me at strangetalespod at gmail.com, with feedback or ideas on future shows. If you would like to support the podcast you can do so through Patreon, go to patreon.com forward slash strangetalespod. Where we have plans from as little as 3 US dollars a month and you can opt out any time. Any help is much appreciated. This is me your host Winston R. Douglas signing out for now. Thanks again, hope to see you again soon.